Well, good morning or evening, depending on where you are. It's 2.41 on the East Coast, 10.41 on the West Coast, and I decided to open up for a little coffee and chat today. On my neck of the woods, I am very close to actually reaching affiliate, finally. I'm actually kind of proud of that. I've been grinding away as hard as I can. And I finally reached my follower cap. That was the hard one. Now I just need to get my interaction and my viewers up. I'd also like to get a lot more people talking in here. See, there's another achievement I've been trying to get, which is build a community. And I seem to be stuck at only having four people in my chat. It's almost enough to make you cry. Mmm, that's some good coffee. So, who do we have in the chat right now? Sadly, they don't give you the option of actually seeing who's out there. So if you're out there, come on in, sit down and we can talk. Well, I'm lucky enough I found a bit of a workaround to getting my hours up. I use Tumblr to advertise some of my streams, or at least I try to. And you know the cool thing about Tumblr? If you put your Twitch link in as a link... It opens the stream in Tumblr. So anybody who sees my message on Tumblr... <laughs> they're watching. And Twitch counts that. Because it is a watcher. 
They might just scroll past. But the video's playing. And who knows? I might actually have a few people on Tumblr right now watching the stream. And if you happen to be on Tumblr and watching the stream, welcome. I'm just here to chat today. Or tonight. It's early morning for me. But I'm usually up at this hour anyway because I'm an Uber driver. And that's how I make my money right now. At least until I can get my chat up. At least until I can get my viewer hours up and actually make affiliate. I'm just doing some stuff behind the scenes to try and get people in. Because there's nobody talking in the chat. And that's what we're here for. I'm hoping to possibly get a few raids tonight since I'm streaming later than usual. I just hope that there are somebody, there is somebody out there that is streaming that would raid me. I mean, I could use it. There are quite a few that I happen to be following that we could raid, but I don't know if they would raid me back. I don't know if they would raid me. I don't know if they're following me. But hey, if somebody does decide to perform a raid on this channel, that would be interesting, because I've never had that happen to me before. Oh, no, I think I've had it happen once. It was a raid of one person. Hmm...
Well. Ooh, this is interesting. Just scrolling through Twitter right now. See if I can get people to come join us. Actually, you know what? Let's just scroll through Twitter together, shall we? Oop. Get rid of the tunnel. There we go. That sounds like fun. that looks like fun. Not following her. We'll go ahead and follow. I try and follow as many VTubers as possible. Oh, wow. Yep. I'm sort of the big brother of the VTuber community, or at least I try to be. Ooh, he's got some really nice art. <laughs> wow, looks like I've got a new follower. Actually, we're at 204 followers, so I'm going to probably do something special for that. Yeah, I know I have the black bars on the side, but that's because 
the TV I'm using has a weird aspect ratio. I have an older I have an older HD TV. I know where that is. That is the David L. Lawrence Convention Center in Pittsburgh, the home of Anthrocon. I've been there. I've performed there on stage. Oh. This person's doing a 24-hour stream, it looks like. They got 11 hours to go. A boo-tuber, huh? Not sure what that means. Go ahead and follow them. Oh, isn't that nice? We'll go ahead and follow you too, since you've got some nice you got nice art. Actually, very easy pills to swallow. Okay, we're not going to. <laughs> Hello. I'm Truck Coon. I work at Isekai Station, isekai people from 9 to 5. I love my job. Give me $20 and I'll isekai someone for you. Uh, yeah, no. That's just too funny. I'm sorry. I'm gonna follow. But, yeah. Uh, another bunny girl. Bunnies are cute. Missing so much. Oh. Well, you know what? I'm going to follow her anyway. It's late night. It's 2 a.m. where I am. I can do all sorts of naughty stuff. Like, curse if I want to. But I'm not going to. I'm a former sailor. I've done all the cur I've done more cursing... Than I care to admit, than I care to actually admit. Mind you, a lot of that was due to stubbing my toe or getting electrocuted. Yeah. Huh? Okay. <laughs> uh. That's weird. Yeah, we're not going to follow. Uh, show me your VTuber model. Um, I don't have one yet? But, yes. Oh, hello! Hello, Presley! Yes! Yes, I am live. We're going to go back to the bar, then. Hello! Welcome to the Velvet Fog Lounge. I'm Cedar, your host. Grab a cup of coffee, and we can just sit here and chat. 
because that's what I'm here for. At least tonight, that's what I'm here for. Sorry, I didn't see you come in. Oh, I'm doing great. I am working on that grind, trying to get my viewership and my interactions up and up and going. I'm working on making affiliate. I've got, I'm 75% there. I've got enough followers. I've got like three weeks worth of streaming done. I'm actually, the scary thing is, I'm already actually two thirds of the way on path to uh, on the path to partner, because I've been streaming every day for the past two, almost three weeks. I've got enough streaming hours and I've got enough streaming days for the month. I just need to get my viewership up. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Per thank you very much, Presley. I appreciate that. I'm actually currently getting this model made into a full 2D Live um, rigged VTuber. I've been doing this. This, this is actually a animated GIF. I know, it's hard to believe. Some people actually honestly mistake this for a full VTuber. Oh, well, thank you. I'm hoping somebody might actually get, uh, f actually decide to come and raid this channel because that would just be amazing. I mean, Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow, Presley. I'm going to probably get the, um, my follower, my, my alerts done, um, and animated later. But that's something to get after, something to worry about after I get affiliate. I only really need two alerts right now. People following me? Well, I should probably get an alert for people coming into the stream as well. And in case somebody raids me. So, Presley, there are only two questions I have. Do you like coffee and how do you like it? Okay, I'll call you press. You know what? While I don't have high-functioning autism, although, to be honest, in this day and age, I probably would get diagnosed with it. When I was a kid, I was diagnosed with Attention Deficit Disorder. They put me on Ridland starting in the second grade. And when I got to the seventh grade, the doctors gave me a choice. They could put me on a higher dosage of Ridland, or they could, I could quit cold turkey and just learn to deal with it. Those were my options. I chose Screw the pills. I'll live with my di I'll live with my problem. And you know what? I thrived. I learned how to take my quote unquote learning disability and make it into a plus.
Hmm. I love coffee. I just don't like black coffee. So I like it where it doesn't taste or smell or look like black coffee. If that makes sense. Yes. Yes. That makes absolutely all the sense in the world, Press. I personally, my coffee of choice, I get the cheap mocha coffee from Walmart. Sugar-free chocolate creamer. Three packets of Splenda. And here's the secret. Don't tell anybody this. You go to the you go to a hobby store and you get these little disposable pipettes and a bottle of peppermint extract. And you fill up that pipette with ex with the extract and add it to the coffee. Add it to the bottom of the cup. You put it at the bottom of the cup, you put the sugar or I use Splenda because I've I have the sugar disease. And then the sugar-free creamer, the sugar-free chocolate creamer on top of that. Then you brew the coffee on top, and it just, oh. It tastes like you're drinking a peppermint patty. It really does. It's amazing. Oh, it is. And, yes, I do love my coffee, so... I happen to have a coffee maker right here next to my computer. <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of nice having just a nice sit-down chat stream from time to time. Uh, yeah. That can happen sometimes. But see, coffee's the... Aw, hugs for you too! That's one of the, that's how I am on, that's actually how I come across on Twitter. I am the big brother of every YouTube, of every VTuber out there. My lap is always open for hugs and head pats. That's my policy. I will be there with sage advice. Oh yeah. Oh, you you follow Autumn too. Yes, I found her on um she started following me on Twitter. We started following each other on Twitter. She's one of my she, she's one of my little sisters on there. <laughs> And no, it doesn't matter if you are a boy or a girl. Oh, you're Unicorn Mama. The scary thing is, I'm probably older than you. Yes, I'm probably older than you. I'm one of the, I think I'm one of the oldest... VTuber slash PNG tubers out there. Yeah, uh, press. No offense. I'm old enough to be your father. I'm 48. The thing, the reason why I do this, yes, VTubing is a young man's game, but you know what? I've lived. I have been almost around the world. The only place I haven't 
I haven't been completely through the Pacific. That's it. The furthest west I ever got was the Philippine Islands when I was four years old. The furthest east I ever traveled was the North Arabian Gulf after 9-11. <laughs> yes, I am glad we are friends. I really am. Thank you for coming. Thank you for stopping by. But yeah, I've. Let's see. If I wanted to go through my CV. I would have to start when I was... After I graduated from high school, I started working at a theme park. And my first job was working a carnival game. Oh, thank you. I love flowers. Actually, there is a special flower event going on in Holland right now. It happens every 20 years. And I actually got a chance to go there when I was a kid. With all the tulips and all the flowers. Uh, the florada, I think is something it's called. I can't remember. But it's, it takes place every 20 years. And my family and I were... My dad was stationed in Germany at the time. And we got a chance to go. Because my grandparents came. <laughs> yeah. I cleaned also. I cleaned the par I, I actually started out as uh, working carnival games, but... Oh, it was. But... Um, let's just say... There are... When you go to... When you work park... When you work games and, and attractions at a theme park, you have to be able to tell who's scamming you and who isn't. The thing is... We got like tons, and I would work at I worked at this basketball game, and I would get swamped, and I would hear people saying, "Where's my change? Where's it's like I gave you a five. Where's my change? I gave you a five. Where's my change?" And I'd lose track, and I'd end, and these people would would literally take could literally take you to the cleaners because you're swamped by hundreds of people and you can't keep track of who you gave money to and who you didn't so they transferred me out of that thank goodness and i started cleaning the park and that's when i learned cleaning a theme park is actually lots of fun especially if you learn how to watch people I could tell you some stories from back then. Um, let's see. One of my friends from when I was living elsewhere, before I moved to where the theme park is. I'm trying to keep things vague so as not to give away my location or where I've been for the most part. Well, while I was working... I came across an old friend who was there on her honeymoon, of all things. <laughs> that was interesting. Well, fortunately, we don't have... Fortunately, most of the theme parks I've worked at, they don't have clowns. The one I worked at we had Looney Tune characters. That's right. You could get hugs from Bugs Bunny. And Daffy Duck and all them. Because I worked at a Six Flags. When I was... When I just graduated from high school. And because I was over 16, I was able to stay late. 
So I would get chosen to help close down the park at night. Whenever we had, the, after we had the fireworks show, I would help sweep up the park, take care of the trash cans, and I'd probably get home maybe about two, three in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm really sorry to hear that because I actually have a costume like that. I might actually show that you, I might actually show that on YouTube if you're if anybody else if I get anybody in here to see anybody else. I don't want to freak you out. Well, after Six Flags, I started working at um a grocery store. And they threatened to... They, they put me in the meat department. Then they transferred me from the meat department. Oh. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. That's exactly what I'm, tr I'm going for here. But yeah, I started working for a grocery store. Actually, two grocery stores. Then... I got a job at... Radio Shack, and I learned that I was really good at retail because I'm good at talking to people and learning what they need. <laughs> yeah, I I can understand that kind of thing too. I actually have a friend who can't stand dolls. Now, when I, when I mean dolls, I mean things like uh, the porcelain dolls that actually look like people. In order to cope with it, she makes what she calls ugly plushies. Things that look absolutely nothing like a human being. And it all goes back to her grandmother who collected these porcelain dolls... And when she was a child, she would get forced to sleep in a room full of these porcelain dolls. And she was afraid they were going to come to life and get her. It happens. But, yeah. What, the, um... The ugly plushies, yeah. She, they basically look like. You ever seen the um? I think it was called the Ugly Dolls. Uh, they made a cartoon. They made a movie about them. At one point, she made plushies that look sort of like that, only without the realistic teeth. <laughs> that kind of freaked me out when I saw those. They made these plushies that had like. Yes, yes, that, that's the kind, yeah, but this, this person, she, she was forced to sleep in a room with these things, and they just kept staring at her, and they freaked her out, and now she's afraid of dolls. It happens, unfortunately. But yeah, there, there were these, uh, the, uh, these ugly dolls that, like, they had, they, they, they looked like, absolute monstrosities but the worst part was they had realistic looking human teeth and it freaked me out <laughs> I mean I wasn't scared it just looked weird to me so a little bit more about myself after several failed career tryouts um, well I worked for like two years at Radio Shack and I was good at it. In fact, I was a little bit too good at it. Some of the other employees complained that I was poaching the computer sales. I just kept selling because I, I was good at it. I was able to tell, get the people to realize, this is the computer you need. Let me set you up. 
I will get you everything you need to go along with it. I would help them pack up. I'd even help them with the financing. I was good at it. But I had one person. And she was just so jealous of me that I was getting these huge commission checks because I was on the floor working with people. I was doing my job while she's standing behind the cash register. It was so bad that my manager came to me and said, look, you've got to give these, you got to give some of these computer sales to other people. And I'm like, why? I'm the one out there busting my butt, helping these people on the floor while she's just standing there behind the cash register playing with her three inch long fingernails <sighs> fortunately she quit and oh god am i so happy but yeah i worked there for two years um then i had some other jobs just random jobs then i tried to become an electrician actually no wait I'm jumping ahead. Before I decided to become an elect try to become an electrician, I joined the Navy. I joined the Navy April 1st of 2000. Let that sink in. Oh my, um, you'll have to excuse me, um, I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Whew. Sorry about that. Let's just say I had a bit of a plumbing emergency. <laughs> so 
So yes. I started out on my naval career April of 2000. So I go through boot camp. I go through my instructional schools, my frame school, and a period of uh, adjustment where they have you work in the uh, where they had me work in the uh, squadrons store where I took care of selling them lunch and coffee and stuff like that. And just as I was about to get assigned to my attachment to become an actual to actually become to actually start working on the helicopters I was supposed to work on. I come in And I'm at the front desk and somebody said, did you hear, did you hear the news? An airplane just crashed into one of the World Trade Centers. And the first thing that I thought was, oh my goodness, it must have been a problem with the flight, with the automatic flight control system. I was an electrician. I was an aviation electrician. I work with that system. I know just how fragile it can be. I know that even the slightest problem could cause an accident like that. And that's what I thought. And while I'm standing there, the second plane hits. And I'm like, okay, one is an accident. Twice, that's something else. I thought there was some kind of disgruntled maintenance worker who literally sabotaged these planes. I had no idea that there were people on those planes with guns forcing the planes to do this. I didn't know that yet. It wasn't until the Pentagon got hit that I realized we were going to war. That was September 11th. 2001 and October 1st I was on my way to the Persian Gulf for the first time it wasn't a fun time no it wasn't But I wouldn't change it for the world. I really wouldn't. I spent six months in the middle of the blazing hot sun. In the middle of winter of all things. And it was over 100 degrees during the day. In the winter. But the most amazing part of being out there in the middle of the ocean was at night. There were no lights. No light pollution. You could literally see forever. It would make you feel kind of small at some times. Especially when you see the, especially when the full moon comes up, and every full moon is one of those quote unquote super moons. And that super moon goes all the way across the sky. The reason why the moon looks so small is because you have trees, you have buildings. You have things to make it look further away. 
when you're in the middle of the ocean and you have mile and you can and you have nothing but flat water from horizon to horizon that moon looks huge but yeah it makes you think just looking up at all those stars and you're like well hello fetch ah Cyber intelligence. Well, that's pretty cool. And welcome, Fetch, to the Velvet Fog Lounge. Grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's talk. <laughs> but yes, my first tour of duty was six months of. Yes, the moon is amazing. But my first tour of duty was six months of absolutely nothing but work and sleep. See, because it was right after 9-11, I mean literally right after 9-11. Ah. But yeah, right after 9-11, the battle group commander was extremely paranoid. He refused to let us pull in the port. We pulled in at the island nation of Bahrain to onload our long-range Tomahawk missiles. And that was the last time we saw land. The entire trip. Every 60 days we the that we're out at sea the navy gives you what they call a beer day they allow you two beers every two months we did what they call a six pack cruise One hundred and eighty days, no land. Oh, we were going stir crazy. Oh, yes, no joke, it's a terrible grog ration. Ugh. I think the I think the best beer that they had was Heineken. The worst thing they had was uh Milwaukee's beer. Beast, as everybody called it. Woo. But beer day was a good day. Absolutely, there were no, um, basically it was like a day off. You know what, Press? I don't drink either. Mainly because, well, I don't drink beer because... My dad got me off of that stuff quick. I was seven years old. We were living in Germany. My dad was drinking. My dad was sitting on the porch drinking some beer with his friends. And of course, as a curious little kid, I'm like, hey, dad, can I try some of that? Now, this was Germany. And the beer my dad was drinking was it, it wasn't the it wasn't American it wasn't this American pale ale urine looking stuff. This was real German beer. We're talking like beer so dark it literally sucks in all the light. So dense you can actually stand a spoon up in the middle of it. And I tried this stuff as a kid. And oh my god it made me sick to my stomach. So I never drank again. I never touched a... I can't drink beer. Nowadays, the, the American stuff just gives me a headache before I can even get buzzed. I think I might be allergic to hops or something. I don't know. I know it's not the barley, but it's prob I'm probably allergic to hops. I never had it checked out. But that's why I don't drink beer. I don't mind wine occasionally. Depends on the wine. My favorite is a good Blackberry Merlot. But I don't drink that very much either. <laughs> yeah.
yeah, pretty much, Fetch. That's that's pretty much an accurate description. I served aboard the USS Leyte Gulf, or as we started calling it, the USS Latex Glove. Because seriously, that six months felt like we were getting a non-stop prostate examination. But after we were done in the Gulf, we wanted to go... Oh, thanks for all the emotes! I feel so loved! I feel so loved! I'm, I'm drowning in love here! And who knows, maybe I'll actually... Maybe I... If this, if I keep this up and I keep getting more people, who knows? I might actually make that affiliate status today. I don't know. I really don't. I don't think so. But I would need a lot. I I would need somebody to like raid me with maybe like a hundred people or something, because I made as a lot of I I I made as a lot of people say a major scuff early on this month I left my stream running for 11 hours straight eleven hours thank you press I appreciate it I appreciate all the love and support maybe I should make this a every Saturday thing where I just come on here and start talking to people. I'm still trying to figure out what kind of schedule I'm going to do. Every morning at about 8.30 my time. That's 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. I do what I call coffee crossing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I do what's called... Yes, I left it running. Just open, no content. All I had on... All I had on was this. That's all that was on there for 11 hours. I had people pop in and out and in and out. But... There was no content. It was just nothing but dead air. Well, dead air and whatever I was doing on my, um, and basically the audio from my, from my, um, from my computer, my desktop. That's all it was. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. And it completely ruined my hours because I had like 11 hours of dead air and nobody there. Not even me. So my average hours just went into the toilet. And it is... Oh! <laughs> Guess what? You guys are sandwiching me. Because it's 2.41 here. So I've got Fetch in Eastern Time and Preston Mountain Time. <laughs> oh, now this is interesting. All I need, so, all I need, is somebody on the West Coast, and we have everybody represented from the U.S. and Canada. Well, almost. There is that one part of Canada that stretches out over into the Atlantic and the Atlantic time zone, which is, um, which would be 440 right now. So, yeah. But after my first tour, it was interesting. Everybody just wanted to go home. We just wanted off the ship. We wanted to go home. We wanted to see our families. But 
the fleet commander's like, no. I don't care where. Every ship is pulling in somewhere in the Mediterranean for four days of shore leave. Aww. I'm sorry to hear that, Press. If it makes you feel, if it helps, I'll be here for you in case you have nightmares, okay? I'll be here with hugs and head pats for you if you ever have a nightmare. I'll make the nightmares go away. Because that's my job as the big brother of the VTuber community. But, yeah. On our way back, we were forced to have a literally four days of mandatory shore leave and we pulled into Spain and I admit it was enjoyable okay fetch which Luna are you talking about Because there's at least two Lunas that I know of that you could be talking about. You could either be talking about uh, Princess Luna from My Little Pony, Friendship is Mad. Ah, uh, yeah. The other Luna is a Anteater from Animal Crossing New Horizons. She's in charge of maintaining the dream library of the internet. And I just recently got the chance to meet her in my Animal Crossing channel. So now I can actually share my island as a dream. And later today, I plan on opening my island up over on Twitter. Okay, yeah, there's Luna from Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter. Let's see, there's. Princess Luna from My Little Pony. There's Luna the Dream Guardian from Animal Crossing. There's Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter. And there's Luna spelled with two O's from Hell of a Boss. She is a very popular... She's very popular. She's furry bait, as a lot of people call her. She's a hellhound. But yeah, back to my story about the long cruise. I was supposed to, we were, we wanted to, we all wanted to go home. We all just wanted to cross the Suez, blow through the Med, head across the Atlantic and just go home. Oh yeah, and there's Luna the Cat from Sailor Moon also. I forgot about that one. And speaking of Sailor Moon, it, I always found it funny that the white cat, Artemis, is actually named after a Greek goddess. Artemis is actually a woman's name, is actually a female name for the Greek goddess of the moon and the hunt. Anyway, so we were told to stop in Spain before we head home, and I realized why. Yay. Yay for your, yay for your uh, baby Yoda plushie giving you loves and hugs. Me? Oh, did you get, where did you get your baby Yoda plushie? Did you get it from Build-A-Bear? Did you get your baby Yoda from the from Build a Bear Workshop?
because I recently got a friend from Build-A-Bear. And she'll actually be coming to my Animal Crossing island on Sunday. Oh, Walmart. Okay. Because I know Build-A-Bear Workshop has a Baby Yoda also. Well, I got me a friend from Build-A-Bear recently. And she's going to be coming to my Animal Crossing island on Sunday. I have a I have an Isabel plushie in her summer uniform actually and um, I might actually go try going back there and getting one of her in her winter outfit later oh well that's nice that's nice press at least you weren't like a certain um Oh wow. <laughs> yes, yes. The bane of the 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 the, the... The, the 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 bane of all plushies cats or at least some cats some cats can really do a number on a plushie if not unintended if if left of intended I like I like I was saying about my long cruise. We all stopped um, along the Med. Some in Italy, some in Spain. We got lucky. We got we got to just stop in Spain. But I realized why the fleet commander had made this decision for us. Why we were being forced to literally stop and not just go home to see our families. Our ship was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia. And there were a lot of there and the thing is there are a lot of single sailors out there. If we had gotten if we had just cruised straight home. Here's what probably would have here's what most likely would have happened. Every drop of liquor within a hundred miles would be gone and anything in two legs and a skirt was fair game we needed to blow off steam before we came into port all the ships came into port Including the aircraft carrier, all the other cruisers, destroyers, and frigates. Over 10,000 people who have not had human contact and actual alcohol in six months. It would have been a riot. And I'm sure that the that command realized that. Our captain wanted to just go home, but the admirals in charge, obviously, they realized what was going to happen when all these single men and women came home, and they just go crazy. So yeah, that was that was my that was the story of my first cruise. So. After my time in the Navy, I got to do what I consider one of my favorite jobs in the world. And yes, it may sound stupid to some people. And if I was getting paid enough to do it, I would probably still be there. I got a chance to work at... Okay. Okay.
So he, so he's your babu, huh? So your little so so your little Grogu plushie is sort of your babu, huh? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Everybody has something like that. Me? No. Hold on a second. I'm going to show you Let's see do do, do. Just need to rescale this. Well, you have your baby Yoda. I have this. She is a cow plushie that I had made of another of another OC of mine, and she stays in my bed. I actually have her dressed up in pajamas right now. I have all kinds of different clothes for her when we go out. And, yeah. The scary thing is that dress that she's wearing is actually a t-shirt for a two-year-old. So, yes, I buy her baby clothes and change them to make them look like um, things like this, like this. Nice little summer dress. And it works. So yeah, like I said. No. That's an actual plushie. I got her built uh, by... I had somebody draw a... Character sheet for her. And then I went to Budsy.com and had her custom made cost me about 300 bucks but well worth it she is very well loved and taken care of and that's just a little tiny area rug near my in front of my front door I got a little doll stand and so she can stand up um Let's see. Aw, 
Well, I do too. And there are a lot of cow YouTubers out there. Oh, well. You have a very good day too. Have a very good day. Good morning or evening or wherever it is. Hello. And yes, press press is here to give out hugs to everybody. So, day, how's your day? Are you are you having a very good day? Day? Aw, thank you. Thank you. I give you hugs, too. Because that's the job of a big brother. And I told you I have her dressed up in pajamas. Here's her pajamas. My day is going has my day is just starting actually. I'm just waking up. Because I have a weird sleep schedule. Yeah. Oh, ow. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, wow, Fetch. Oof. You get extra hugs and head pats. You have had a rough year. <sighs> Hopefully, the uh, bacterial infection in your sibling's back is, well, is easily treatable. Or at least I hope it's treatable. And, uh, Day Press happens to be a unicorn, so she might actually be made out of sugar. Thanks for spreading the positivity, Press. I really appreciate that. Because that's what we're trying, that's what I want this channel to be about. This is a place where we don't judge you on who you are or what you are. We'll just go ahead and shut that off. There we go. But yeah, we don't judge you based on who you are or what you are. Everybody's welcome here at the lounge. If you're having a rough day, I'm here to talk to you. If you just need a shoulder to cry on, I've got two. If you need hugs and head pats because you need support from somebody, I've got a lap big enough to sit the world. Because that's the kind of person I want to be. I want to be supportive. I want to be everybody's big brother. Because everybody needs a big brother. Everybody needs that one person they know they can go to for advice. <laughs> yep. 
you know what, Press? I appreciate that. That that that's something special. It may sound silly to some people. It really it really might. But personally, I think you should be allowed to take him wherever you want. And the cool part is I know play I know people who will who actually do take their um plushies everywhere and they have made a kind of a, a, a blog based around their plushie and the different places that they go to and take pictures of their plushie wherever they go um if I remember, I mean, a lot of some popular people have done that. You could start a Baby Yoda blog and just take him places, take your little Grogu to places, and just take pictures of him, and talk about the adventures he's having in those places. You wouldn't be the first. In fact, um, I know. Disneyland, to Tokyo Disney. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Well, I'm glad they're... Well. Okay. We have a battleship park here, too. And the battleship here, we've had to been we've has been taken care has been taken very good care of. They actually set it up as a museum back in the '60s, and it's been manned by military personnel, by naval personnel, for all that time from back in the '60s. They wanted to scrap the battleship, but my mom and her classmates they actually raised enough money to have the ship turned into a monument here. Oh. Okay, I, I can understand that, Press. But still, like I said, if you get a chance, you might want to try doing that. Because, I mean, I know Tokyo Disney actually has little places. Um, they have the little Duffy teddy bears. Duffy, and the thing is, Duffy is actually supposed to be Mickey Mouse's teddy bear. Well, they have little platforms where you can set up Duffy and take photos of your teddy bear. And they're open to anybody who wants to 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 use them to just take photos of their plushies at Di at Tokyo Disney. I wish they had that in a lot of other places. I wish they had that in uh, Walt Disney World, which, as I was trying to get to after my time in the Navy, I worked at Disney World for a while. Probably what I would consider my favorite job in the world. I clean the parks at Disney. I worked at You know what? Your mom might be right that people don't know that you have autism, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't carry him around. If he helps you, if he's your if 
he's your support if he's your support grogu oh lord <laughs> i just got a crazy idea ah well yes there are a lot of people and working there was lots of fun it really was And the thing is, this is the interesting part. One of the more interesting parts. Before I started working at six, before I started working at Disney World, I was paid to scare people. I worked at a year round haunted house attraction in Orlando. And I was paid to scare the bejeebas out of people. To be honest, I didn't particularly like the job. I don't like, I personally don't like being jump startled. But I will admit, I do have some funny stories. I would dress, basically, I would dress as a clown in this really, really cheesy um, rubber mask so that I could change out and become a zombie and go over to another area. And seriously, nothing is funnier than seeing a guy six foot four. 250 pounds of muscle jump and scream like a little girl because you jumped out at them wearing a rubber clown mask. It's it it's funny. It really is. <laughs> but honestly, the day that I realized I didn't like doing this job was the day I scared two people so bad that they absolutely would not move. I had them frozen in their tracks because I was dressed as... I was the last scare that night. And I had an electric chainsaw. And they just saw me... They saw me there and they're like, Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. I can't... We can't move. I just, I just stood there. I just stood there looking at them with a chainsaw hanging loosely in my hand. Because I'm like, okay, look, you're going to have to leave. You're going to have that. The only way through here is past me. And I'm just going to stand here and wait and let you pass. I tried to be as non-threatening as I could. Now, mind you, once they passed me, I chased them out with a chainsaw, and they ran screaming. But apparently, just me standing there with a chainsaw in my hand was too scary for them. But, yeah. I personally don't like being scared, and I found that I didn't like scaring other people. So I left that job and started working at Disney. And once again, cleaning the parks was... And especially at a place like Disney, is a whole different beast than trying to clean the parks at um, Six Flags. You get people from all over the world... And the thing is, this is something people don't realize about Orlando. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. Oh, God. Speaking of scaring people, have I got a story for you from my childhood? See... You, you, 
you know how some people are claustrophobic? Yeah, well, it's the sweet and cute ones you have to be worried about. I mean, look at Mandy from Billy and Mandy. Does she look like the kind of person to scare the living bejesus out of people? But she's one of the scariest cartoon characters I can think of. But, yeah. You know how some people can be claustrophobic? Well, I'm claustrophilic. I love tight, I love dark, tight, and closed spaces. No, not that way. I could literally crawl into a... Oh, you don't know the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy? She's a blonde who dresses up in a pink dress and little um, Mary Jane shoes. She looks like she would be the sweetest, kindest young lady ever, but she's extremely cynical and she basically keeps the Grim Reaper as a pet. Oh, you might like it. It's a, I'll admit it's an, it's an older cartoon from back in the, from back in the day when Cartoon Network still showed original works, original stuff. You might want to, you might be able, if you have um, HBO Max, you can probably find it on there. You might be able to find it on HBO Max. Well, anyway, like I was saying, I happen to be claustro. I I I, I would be qualified as claustrophilic. I love into. I love tight. I love dark enclosed places. When I was a kid, I used to crawl into a closet into closets just to take a nap. Well, there was a big bully that lived across, that lived next door to me at my grandpa's house. Lived next door to my grandpa. And he liked to pick on me. So one day, he throws me in a closet and shuts the door and keeps me in there. Thinking that, oh, he's gonna, he, he's gonna, he's gonna get scared, and me, I just curled up and took a nap. I took a nap on the floor. And then I thought, hey, you know what? This is a fun game. I'm gonna do the same thing to him. I threw him in the closet, and I leaned against the door. And he began to panic and beat on the door. Because he was claustrophobic, and he was scared to death of that closet. And he thought everybody would be scared to death of that closet. I know, right? He thought he was. He thought everybody would be claustrophobic. Everybody should be scared of that of the dark tight of the dark closet. He never even thought about the fact that I'd probably actually sleep in there, and I did. But the interesting thing is, after I did that to him, he never picked on me again. He never tried to bully me again. Well, this has been a fun stream so far. Been going at this for about an hour 45. 
And I am going to be streaming again later today. I'm going to be streaming um, Animal Crossing. So I'm just going to throw this up here. There's my friend code. If you want to send me a friend request, I'll add you to my friends list. And I might actually have a friends only day over on my island so that people can just it's like all my friends can just come over and we'll have fun but later today i'm going to be opening my island for everybody i'm going to put my dodo code on my twitch and just see who shows up i mean the thing is um, resident services will be closed today because they're building it up. Okay. You do that, Press. I would really enjoy that. And it's nice having you here to talk to. I completely understand. But like I said, See, Animal Crossing, the, the best part about Animal Crossing is it's not so much a video game as it is an experience. Yes, there are quote-unquote achievements. The bigger your house, the better. And that's always fun. But the fun part about Animal Crossing is being able to just share time with your friends there's no score well I plan to and I hope I get a whole bunch of people the last time I opened up my island to just everybody at random I had people coming over and dropping off uh, fossils and artwork and money and stuff like that and that was fun that was I was able to pay. I've a, I've been able to make just about all the renovations on my house now. All I need left is the basement. But that means I have my upstairs bedroom and I can start um, decorating my house properly. I only have one room set up already and that's my streaming room. I actually have a desk with a chair and my switch so that I have my streaming set up. Basically, I got a streaming set up in my house in Animal Crossing, which is kind of cool. But, yeah, I plan on having fun with this stream. Yes. That's that's the cool thing about Animal Crossing. <clears throat> the thing is, you can make more money than you'll ever need. And because of that, some people will just... Like, look. Shut up and take my money. I've got too much of it. Here. I'll come over... I'll come over with, like... So many bags of money, it's just ridiculous. I'll have like three... I, I had somebody come drop off three million bells and then just leave. And because of that, I've been able to pay off almost all of my home. Well, thank you. Um, I do have one follower who... I've visited their island quite a few times already. So that was fun. that and that's been fun. We're now best friends on Animal Crossing. My island has been progressing quite a bit. 
and I know it probably sounds silly, but I already set up a throne account for myself because there is something on there that I'm going to need people to help me with. Come on, Nightbot! Where are you? Yes, best friends are the bestest. Oh, that's why it's not working. There we go. But yes, my... My custom, my, 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 my top gift on there that I really want are these little NFC coins. They're little radio tag coins. I have an application, I have an app on my um, iPhone. I believe it's still here on my iPhone somewhere. Uh, I don't think it got deleted. That lets me make those little tags into basically amiibos. And being able to make my own amiibos, I plan on making amiibos for every villager that has a code out there. Because I actually have the information for that. I just gotta find that app real quick. Nope, not that one. Well, anyway, I plan on... I have an entire... I already have the entire set of sisterly villagers in a separate bucket, in one bucket. I plan on actually making a bucket for each type of villager, and I will pull a villager at random. And we'll have... We'll literally just have random villagers popping up and showing up on the stream. Then once I have my village fully filled out, I will, um, I've already chosen at least one of my permanent villagers. One that I absolutely do not want to get rid of. I want her to stay no matter what. And I will do my best. I will fight tooth and nail to keep her on my island. And I am going to get her framed picture. 
which is something a lot of people don't realize, a, a lot of people don't know about. There are um, the Yeah, all I need is the little tokens in order to make my, um, in order to actually, there it is. I just need the tokens to, and I'll use my, well, hello! Thank you for the follow! Thank you for the follow, Ta or Tay, however you want me to pronounce your name. But all I need is the tokens to write the tags. And then once I have. Okay, call you Ta. Or Tay. Long A or short A? <laughs> well, either way, welcome. We're just sitting here talking, chatting, talking about Animal Crossing right now. Um, once I finally get uh kk slider and if anybody were to help me out by getting these uh little nfc tokens you can find it on my um yep press is giving out free hugs to everybody that's that's their job But also, you can follow me on Twitter. And later today, I'm going to be releasing my Dodo code for Animal Crossing. When I do my, what I call Coffee Crossing stream. And there is my friend information, if you're interested. You can send me a friend request, and we might be able to become best friends on Animal Crossing. And if you want to catch my old stuff... I have a YouTube channel where I post all of my old streams. I have got several hours of streaming over there. You can catch all of my other crossing. Well, my day is going rather well. I woke up about four hours ago. I've had my coffee, and my day is going rather well. I'm doing this mainly to try and get my viewer hours. And it's 3.30 here. 3.30 in the morning here. I'm mainly doing this to um, try and keep my viewer hours up because I'm gr I'm doing that grind to get to affiliate. And for anybody who's interested. I do have my own Discord server. 
everybody and anybody's welcome to join. <laughs> yep, hey, it's okay. Me, this is my, this is the start of my morning cuz I'm an Uber driver. Monday through Friday, I drive from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. The reason why I do it is because for the most part here in the town I live, the bars all close at 2. So all the drunks, so all the really, really drunk people are already at home by 3. At 5 a.m. is when the rush hour starts. So, a lot of people are, a lot of the nighttime people are clo are ending their driving at 3 a.m. And the early morning drivers are starting their hours at 5 a.m. But that little two-hour window between 3 and 5 a.m. There are people who need rides, and I'm the only one out there. Now, a lot of people might think, oh, three in the morning, that's got to be scary. But that's the thing. The scariest time to drive is honestly late nights on the weekends. That's when you get rowdies that might start a fight and actually attack you in your car. Between 3 and 5 in the morning, the people you pick up, they need to get somewhere. I don't mean want, I mean need. You're either taking people to work, or you're taking people to the emergency room, or picking them up from the emergency room. I have a lot of elderly people who I have to take to their dialysis appointments. You know, Press, I'm the same way. I do not like hitting animals. I do, and it and I honestly do cry whenever I see roadkill on the side of the road. It makes me sad. But, yeah. And the interesting, and, and probably some of the best things that happened to me is... Starting at around four o'clock, I could get rides all the way. I can get rides out to the airport because our airport. We have a small regional airport, and our airport opens at about five thirty in the morning. So four o'clock, a lot of people will four four o'clock four thirty. A lot of people will be getting rides out to the airport, our local airport, or I might get rides out to the airport in the next state over. That's an hour drive, and that's almost that's about seventy-five to a hundred dollars in my in my pocket, depending on where I picked them up from. And the only reason that people go to the airport the next day over is because it's an international and they can go different places in the country where here we've only got like three airlines and four locations you can go to. Well, except for Wednesdays, we do have one flight to Chicago. Well, I've been here talking for about mm, two hours now. 
so I think we should go raid somebody. Oh, yes, I happen to be from the U.S. And I think Presley... Presley's probably from the U.S., but she could be from Canada. Press could probably be from Canada. I don't know. Considering the time zone she's in, she could be Canadian. Heck, she could possibly be from Mexico. I don't know. But we're definitely from the Western Hemisphere. We are from the Western Hemisphere, though, yes. So where are you from, Ta? Yeah, okay, we got... No, we're, we're, I'm not leaving. We're not leaving. I asked you a question. Oh, well, yeah, I, I was planning on getting a nap. I, I was planning on getting a nap. Oh, you're from Asia. Oh. Whereabouts? Okay. Yeah, most of us, the three of us are from the U.S. Uh, but, so where where in Asia are you from, Ta, if I may ask? Because Asia is a very large place. They were also a very good music group from the 80s. Oh, Southeast Asia. The... Ooh, that could be... Uh... Laos, Vietnam... Okay. Well, at least it narrows it down a little bit, because there's quite a few countries there. Well, anyway. I think we're going to raid a certain goldfish that I happen to know. No, actually, no. No, we're not going to raid the goldfish. Because I'm a small streamer, I'm going... Yeah, and I live in the furry side of VTuberville. That's where I live. <laughs> That's where I live, playing the piano at this little coffee shop slash microbrewery we call the Velvet Fog Lounge. Well. So I think we're going to raid... Big Daisy. Because she's only got four people watching her stream. And I'm sure she'll appreciate a few more people to help her on her grind to uh, affiliate. Well. So I'm going to call it a stream for now. But before I go, just remember, stay hydrated. Very important. And remember, always be you. No matter what anybody tells you, always be you. Don't be what anybody else wants you to be. Be who you want to be. I'll catch you later for Coffee Crossing in...
in about five hours. Until then, yes, you get some sleep press. See you back here, hopefully, in about five hours for Coffee Crossing. Later.